Welcome to our Wausau School District Ames Web Overview. Research shows Ames Web is considered the gold standard response to intervention tool. In addition, the Specific Learning Disabilities Law established by the State of Wisconsin effective December 1, 2013 requires more specific data addressing more academic areas than we were able to collect using Dibbles alone. As such, it makes sense for the Wausau School District to adopt the Ames Web Screening and Progress Monitoring tool to replace Dibbles. As of December 1, 2013, several significant changes will take effect when evaluating a student for a specific learning disability. For any SLD impairment, there are eight different areas a child may qualify in. To meet the requirements of this law, students under evaluation will need to have two research-validated intensive interventions per area of concern. Further, their progress within those interventions must be monitored weekly for a minimum of eight weeks. Ames Web offers the necessary progress monitoring tools to use in accordance with this law. Roughly 30 intervention teachers, school psychologists, and other staff attended a two-day Train the Trainers workshop in September. In preparation for a smooth transition from Dibbles to Ames Web, this overview is the first in a series of three sessions aimed at preparing you to administer the assessments by the January Winter Benchmark. Ames Web also provides useful information through universal screening and progress monitoring for those students who are in the regular education setting. As such, Ames Web fulfills Wisconsin's vision for the response to intervention framework as outlined by the Department of Public Instruction. Here is some background on the three main types of assessment that help inform our instructional practice. All students, kindergarten through fifth grade, are given the universal screener three times per year. This is a formative assessment, and we use those results to determine which students may require additional diagnostic testing. For example, in the Wausau School District, those students who scored in the intensive or strategic range on Dibbles were also given the Fountas and Pinnell benchmark to dig deeper and figure out the child's instructional needs. To be in alignment with the specific learning disabilities law, we will continue to progress monitor using a normed assessment. We are currently using Dibbles to progress monitor on a weekly basis, but in January we will switch to Ames Web. These measures show small changes over time that allow us to see if children are closing their achievement gap and moving towards their end of the year grade level target. Summative assessments are high stakes state tests. The WKCE and eventually the Smarter Balanced Assessment are summative tests that summarize what the child has learned across a broad range of content per grade level. So what is Ames Web? Like Dibbles, Ames Web is a universal screening and progress monitoring system. The frequent feedback loop it offers empowers teachers to make better decisions about the programs and services students receive. There are many similarities between Ames, Web and, between Ames and Dibbles. Both assessments are built on the same 30 years of research. Both assessments are valid and reliable measures. And in their initial creation, Dibbles and Ames Web were both developed by the same researchers. In Dibbles, the reading passages are called oral reading fluency probes. In Ames Web, those passages are called curriculum-based measures, or CBMs. There are several unique advantages of using Ames Web, and of course these correlate with strong, are highly correlated with best practices and research supported methods for assessment and instruction. They're sensitive to small improvement and they focus on repeated measures of performance and trends in the data, 
We never look at just one score. We make decisions off, off of three or four or five scores that show us a trend over time. So what are the three components of AIMSWeb and how do they help us inform instruction? To recap, AIMSWeb has three components. The universal screener, given three times per year. The frequent progress monitoring, given weekly to intensive needs students and more strategic monitoring for those students who are either being exited from intervention or for whom are not in a formal intervention but may need additional instructional support. Universal screening serves multiple purposes. Some advantages of universal screening includes evaluating your core instruction, identifying both gifted and at-risk students, and tracking growth over time. All screening measures are done on grade level. Like Dibbles, the Ames Web probes are quick and easy to administer. So what are the Ames Web assessments? At kindergarten and first grade, there are four assessments, the tests of early literacy. Letter naming fluency, letter sound fluency, phoneme, segment, phoneme segmentation, and nonsense word. Three of those four are identical to what we see in Dibbles. The only difference in the test of early literacy is the letter sound fluency. In Dibbles, we, did, we used initial sound fluency, and in Ames Web, we're looking at letter sound fluency, and this assessment looks very similar to what's in PALS. Here, on, you can see on the screen, that we are looking at lowercase letters for letter sound fluency, where in PALS it's uppercase. And this is a measure of, of fluency, therefore it's timed, whereas in PALS it's not. Here are two examples of the phoneme segmentation and nonsense word fluency, which again are very similar to what we see in Dibbles. And finally, um, all of these assessments are available in Spanish. Tests of early numeracy. These four general outcome measures are based on research examining the development of children's informal mathematical knowledge. Each task is one minute and designed to represent a critical early numeracy skill for kindergarten and first grade students. These measures may also be used at any grade for progress monitoring purposes. The tests for early numeracy include oral counting measures, how high can a student count aloud in one minute starting at one, Number identification measures, students name numbers written out of sequence. Quantity discrimination measures, students compare two numbers to determine which is bigger. And missing number measures, students determine the missing number in a sequence of three. So to summarize, these are the Dibbles and Ames Web Literacy Assessments at kindergarten through eighth grade. We will do universal screens for all students K through 5 using these assessments. Ames Webb has conducted extensive research to create passages in oral reading fluency that are of very similar difficulty between grade levels. A difference between Ames Webb and Dibbles is that in Ames Webb, we have three probes exclusively reserved for benchmark, and the same three probes are used fall, winter, and spring. Also, unlike Dibbles, the reading passages do not have story titles on the tops of the pages. Instead, Ames Webb just uses an informative first sentence and eliminates titles. That way, the student is permitted to start reading the first word she or he sees and can have full value for the words read correctly throughout the probe. We also have 30 probes per grade level, except grade one, which has 22, for progress monitoring. We then extend the reading probes through grade eight and have applications for their use in high school as well. Of note, Ames Web probes stop at eighth grade, however, these probes are designed for use in grades 9 through 12 as well. To use at the high school level, you would administer an 8th grade probe and measure the student's progress based on the normative data collected by Ames Web and leveled for grades 9 through 12. A new progress monitoring and benchmark measure for us is the Mays Passage. This is another um, alternate test subtest of general reading ability 
It's given three times per year as a benchmark. It takes three minutes given to the group. It's considered a modified closed procedure, so the students read the first sentence in its entirety, and then after that, every seventh word is missing, and the children have to determine which word fits into the sentence. This, this subtest is uh, appropriate for grades three and above, and we will begin using it in January uh, and progress monitor for students as needed. The math computation measures are designed to be administered in grades 1 through 8 or may be used for progress monitoring at any age. Each measure is designed to take 8 minutes and may be group or individually administered. The math computation measures are to be given to grades 1 through 5 three times per year. The math concepts and applications measures are designed to be administered in grades 2 through 8 due to limited enabling behaviors and or skills of students in grade 1 to take this type of test. Each measure is designed to take 8 minutes or 10 minutes depending on whether it is for grades 2 through 6 or grades 7 and 8, respectively. These measures may also be group or individually administered. The math concepts and applications measures are to be given to all students three times per year in grades 2 through 5. This slide summarizes the new math assessments required at kindergarten and first grade, beginning in January of 2014. This slide summarizes the math assessments required in grades 2 through 5, beginning January of 2014. So let's walk through the AIMSWeb process in four simple steps. Step 1. Deliver the Ames Web Assessments. Delivering the Ames Web Assessments looks and feels a lot like what we are already doing with Dibbles. You can score student responses using the paper pencil method that you're currently used to, or you can score it online. One great new advantage for Ames Web is browser based scoring. This is a great time saving tool that's particularly useful when scoring the, C the CBMs or oral reading fluency probes. The student reads aloud and you follow along on an iPad, Chromebook, or computer, marking the errors electronically, including the timing. The data is automatically dumped into the system for Ames Web. Step 2, recording scores. This process, again, is either done automatically through the browser-based scoring system, or you can manually enter the scores into the software. The process of entering scores for a typical classroom teacher takes only a few minutes. This will be done for universal screening three times per year and for progress monitoring data on a weekly basis. Step three is analyzing the reports. The data are instantly available for educators once scores are entered into the system. Future training sessions will be provided and information will be shared on how to access the reports for database decisions to use in your PLCs and RTI meetings. Step four, use the data regularly to inform instruction. The goal is to use Dibbles, I'm sorry, the goal is to use Ames web data to inform our instruction. The universal screens allow us to know who we need to, to dig deeper with on progress monitoring tools. I'm sorry, and the progress monitoring tools help us to determine if our instruction is making an impact. Remember, we are always looking for trends over time. The primary purpose of Ames Web is to quickly obtain the information needed to make database decisions using reliable, valid data. So what about reports at the district or school level? As you can see, there are a lot of reports available through the Ames Web software system. We will simplify the process for you and focus your attention on two or three of these specific reports in future trainings. Two more training sessions will be made available to staff before winter break to help prepare you for the January benchmark data collection. Additional training may take place after winter break as needed. For the training sessions occurring before winter break, session two will focus on math and session three will focus on reading. Within both training sessions, practice with scoring, logging in, and downloading the needed materials will be included. This concludes our Ames Web Overview presentation.